Now to this, to a similar story that's unfolding in Bahrain, where uh, the government's launched a merciless crackdown there in the last three weeks and is accused of beating demonstrators in the streets, hauling human rights activists in for questioning. Human Rights Watch says Bahraini police forces have detained as many as 430 people just in recent weeks, four of those activists who died in custody, many of their bodies showing signs of torture. But I want to tell you the story now of one woman whose husband and father have been detained going on a hunger strike. CNN's Amber Lyon uh, with more from this. I know you were just recently in Bahrain. But first, before we talk about this young woman, this 27-year-old woman, help everyone understand why Bahrain is so significant uh, when you look at the relationship between uh, the U.S. and Bahrain. And a lot of that has to do with the, the Navy. Yeah, the Navy has a, a vital base there, the Fifth Fleet Naval Base, which provides support to troops in Iraq and Afghanistan. Also, Bahrain is considered to be a friend of the U.S., uh, an ally. And, and like it or not, people consider the actions of that government to be kind of U.S. approved. So if they're accused of, of torturing people, people are thinking that the U.S. government is allowing that to happen. Then you have this 27-year-old woman who, tell me about her, and, and she's essentially, she stopped eating. She wants, she's willing to starve because she wants her family to be safe. Starve to death. Her name is... Starve uh, to death. She's a 27-year-old Zainab al and uh, she is the mother of a one-year-old daughter, and she says that over the weekend, security forces stormed into her home and arrested, uh, violently arrested, she says, her father, a prominent human rights activist, his name is Abdul Hadi al and uh, in addition to that, they took her uh, brother-in-law and her husband, and she believes they were all targeted for their human rights work. Uh, we spoke with, we tried to speak with Bahraini authorities. They haven't commented on the issue yet, uh, but she definitely wrote a letter to President Obama asking for some type of help. Has anyone responded? Has the State Department responded to this letter? Yeah, the State Department has uh, responded. They did say they're aware of the case and they're calling on the Bahraini authorities to give him a fair trial. Also to let the family know why he was arrested in the first place. She hasn't heard from her father or husband since. There has been no arrest warrant served. Uh, in addition to that, the State Department has become a little more bold in speaking out against these claims of torture going on in Bahrain. As you said earlier, four bodies uh, suspected of possibly being tortured uh, have, have shown up in the past two weeks. What about the protests? I know you were there, you saw Pearl Square. We've seen the pictures of that big massive monument that was sort of obliterated. I mean, have, have the protests, have they quelled at all? Or is it still, is the momentum still there? Well, you're not seeing the massive protests that you're seeing in, in Syria and other countries. And that's mainly because there is such an intense military presence in Bahrain right now. And the military has essentially taken over Pearl Square and turned that into a base that used to be the center of the revolution in Bahrain. But there is, a, as one source told me, a, a protest kind of seething underneath in Bahrain among the villagers who feel right now like they are being oppressed and they feel like they're scared to leave their homes. And they're also terrified that these masked armed men are going to come in late at night and take them away without them ever being seen again. Which, which is happening right now, as in the case of Zainab and, and her family. And you were in one of those villages, and I don't know how you got in there, but you were in one of the villages, and that's when we saw you get tear gassed. You and your crew were able to leave, and many others cannot. Mm -hmm. uh, Amber Lyon, I appreciate you telling her story. Let us know if there's an update. I will. She's on day four now, and four. Uh, she says that she's not going to take, uh, she won't even add sugar to her water. People on Twitter were begging her to add sugar to the she's water. She's not even doing that. Uh, but no, she says she will die unless she sees her father and husband again safely released. Amber, thank you. Thanks, Brooke.